Assalamu alaikum, hope you're all doing well, inshallah. Today we are going to take a dive into Surah Al-Duha, a beautiful surah, a comforting surah, one that came down to comfort the Prophet wasallam, and one that we can find comfort inshallah in as well. So let's jump right into it. A quick background um, on the surah, there was revelation coming down to the Prophet wasallam, and then all of a sudden one day it stopped and didn't come down for a period of time and the prophet وسلم, of course was concerned sad not knowing what's going on because he had no warning no indication that revelation was going to stop or anything so he wasn't sure what happened and it said that um, people of Quraysh even were saying oh look his lord has forgotten him or forsaken him so the prophet وسلم, was of course concerned whether he did something, does Allah not love him, does Allah not need him anymore, what is going on, he doesn't know. And these are feelings that we can even relate to because there are times that maybe we feel the same way. When we are in certain situations or facing certain things in our daily life, we might feel the same way. We might feel, does Allah not love me? Why is Allah not answering my dua? Why am I in this situation? And so on. We might get similar thoughts, so we can relate to this. So it was a period of time, no revelation came, and then this surah came down. So let's dive right into it. We look at these two verses together, inshallah. By the morning brightness, and by the night when it covers with darkness. So Allah opens up the surah swearing by two things. The morning brightness of duha, which is the time when the sun is lighting up the sky in the morning, and then by the night when it envelopes with darkness. He swears by the opposite thing, when the night becomes dark and envelopes in pitch blackness. And subhanAllah, these two things, the imagery is beautiful because when we are in different situations, situations might feel light, to us and might feel dark to us depending on what is happening so we see a beautiful parallel in this description being used Allah swearing by the morning light and then also the darkness that envelopes and in the same way we can look at the revelation that was coming to the Prophet that revelation when it was coming down was a light coming down to the Prophet and when it stopped it felt like darkness and same thing with us when we are going through hardships and struggles. When things are easy, it feels light and bright. And then when we are going through a hardship and a struggle, it feels dark. So the parallel, the imagery is fitting for the situation. And it's a reminder to us that the one who brings light and darkness in this world is the same one that can bring light to us when we are in some sort of darkness or situation. It's also a beautiful reminder that we wouldn't be able to appreciate the light if we didn't know the opposite, if we didn't know darkness. When we look at the sunlight and when the morning light comes out, we're able to appreciate it because we have the nights and the darkness that we experience of the night. So we are able to appreciate the light. If everything was always light and bright, we wouldn't appreciate it because we wouldn't know anything else. So it's also a reminder to us, inshallah, that as we are going through situations, we are able to appreciate the good times because of those negative things or struggles that we might be going through. And then he says what? مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى Your Lord has not forsaken you nor detest you. Now, the Prophet ﷺ at this point was thinking, and also it said that people were telling him that his Lord hates him or he did something wrong or maybe he's not needed anymore. So those thoughts that are going through the Prophet ﷺ's mind and, and wondering, Allah is telling him, no, that's not right. First of all, Allah did not say farewell to you, did not leave you, and also he doesn't hate you. The first part of it, ma wadda'aka, is like Allah did not say farewell to you. In Arabic, wada is typically a goodbye that is more permanent. It's not the regular goodbye where, oh, I'm going to the supermarket and I'll be back in 10 minutes. It's not that sort of goodbye. But wada, the word that is used is when somebody's leaving, it's more permanent. It's a more permanent departure of this of this person. So Allah is telling uh, the Prophet وسلم, that he did not say farewell to him. He did not give him a permanent uh, farewell. He's not doing that. And also... There's nothing wrong with anything that you have done. Allah is happy with you. Allah does not detest you. So that thought is false. So it's 
words of comfort to the Prophet ﷺ. And by the way, the tone of the surah is also so comforting and soft in language. You can see the surahs that are directed towards the Prophet ﷺ. The tone is so much softer than, for example, the surahs that are directed towards the Quraysh and disbelievers and so on. The tone in this surah is soft. Allah is talking to the Prophet ﷺ and comforting him. And also through it, we find comfort, inshallah, as a reminder to us if we are feeling like in a situation where maybe Allah doesn't love us or we are in a situation and we've done things and we don't know is Allah unhappy with us or so on, it's also a reminder to us that Allah loves you still. You know, don't think that Allah doesn't love you. Just turn back and keep trying and so on. So even for us, it's a form of comfort, inshallah. If we are ever thinking that we are in such a bad situation or a struggle and we are making dua and there's no way out and is Allah hearing us and so on take this as a reminder that Allah sees you hears you recognizes you and loves you and then what does he tell the prophet he says and the akhirah the end basically is better for you than the beginning so what is the end and what is the beginning so some take it to mean that what is coming after in the future um you will see will be better than the situation that you are in now or what has been happening or what is your beginning and some take the akhirah to mean after that so meaning the final day right the jannah is better for you than what is in this world so there's two ways to look at it whether we are looking at it just from the dunya perspective what is coming in the dunya is better for you than what has been or from the next life perspective so what is coming in terms of jannah is better for you better than what is in this dunya so there's two ways that scholars look at this and it's also a reminder for us inshallah a comforting reminder that whatever struggles you are going through in this dunya inshallah there will come a time where there will be no struggles and no worries and no stress and inshallah our fates inshallah are jannah inshallah our ultimate destination inshallah is jannah we just need to push through the struggles the things we face in this world, in this dunya, and try to keep striving towards Allah, and Ya Rabb, we will get a destination that is far better than what is in this world. And then he says, وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى And your Lord is going to give you and you will be satisfied. Prophet ﷺ is being told that he's going to be given, and it's not even mentioned exactly what and the best giving comes from Allah he didn't even limit it or specify exactly what but he told the Prophet وسلم, that your Lord will give you and you will be satisfied and subhanallah who doesn't want that it's a reminder that what we get from Allah we will be satisfied with it. The reward with Allah and the destination with Allah, when we strive for Allah's sake, we will be satisfied. We will never be disappointed with what Allah has in store for us. Anything else that we chase in this dunya, whatever it is, there is disappointment because we can't be fully satisfied in this dunya. But with Allah, we will be satisfied we will be satisfied there's nothing more that we could want so he will give us to the point that we are satisfied and then he follows with reminders to the prophet ﷺ. so he says that the next what's next is better for you and allah is going to give you to the point that you are satisfied and then he reminds the prophet ﷺ of things that he has done for him reminding the prophet ﷺ that allah's promise is true Allah is reliable. Look at the past history. Allah has been reliable. Look at the things that he has done for you. So trust that what is coming is going to be better. And so he reminds the Prophet ﷺ and also through it are reminders for us of the things that Allah has given us before. So he tells the Prophet ﷺ, Did he not find you an orphan and give you refuge? The Prophet ﷺ had his father die before he was born. And then he had his mother 
pass away. And then he was put in the care of his grandfather. And then a couple of years and his grandfather passed away. And then he was put in the care of his uncle. At every point, Allah gave him refuge through certain people. And it's a reminder to us sometimes that the things that we we get from others, it's a reminder to us to link it to Allah. Yes, the Prophet ﷺ was taken care of by certain people and other people and so on, but ultimately it is from Allah. It's ultimately from Allah that he put these people in the Prophet Sallallahu path and gave the Prophet Sallallahu refuge. And it's a reminder to us, any refuge that we have through whomever or whatever it is, we need to link it to Allah because it's ultimately Allah that is giving us that refuge. And then he says, وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًا فهدا, And he found you lost and guided you. The Prophet Sallallahu was seeking for something, seeking for what it was. He wouldn't worship the idols and so on, like how the people around him were doing. He was seeking for that, that thing with Allah. And Allah guided him through the prophethood, through the revelation of Qur'an, and all that came with it, all the pillars and the lessons and the knowledge and so on, Allah guided him. And in the same way, Allah guides us to the right path, to striving for his sake. We all come from different stories and backgrounds, right? And at some point we're striving and seeking and finding Allah along the way and it is him that who ha it is him who has guided us through that path so it's a reminder to us that he found us lost and he guided us we all go through ups and downs make mistakes our iman dips up and down and it is Allah that finds us in that state and helps guide us and he found you poor and made you self-sufficient so the prophet sallallahu is given these three reminders of how allah has provided for him in terms of refuge in terms of guidance and in terms of sufficiency it's reminders to us as well if we are taken care of we have guidance we have a sufficiency alhamdulillah these things are blessings from allah we should look at what allah has given us and find comfort and gratitude in that so he reminds the prophet sallam and comforts him with the things that he has provided for him and then gives advice so there were three verses of reminders and then now three verses of advice so as for the orphan do not oppress him so the prophet has given a message to be kind to orphans don't oppress them don't humiliate them be kind to them of course the prophet was already doing so but this is a reminder to us as well of the importance of this of how we treat others and he continues and as for the one who asks then don't repel them so a sail is someone who asks it could be somebody who's asking for money who's begging for money or somebody who's asking for knowledge a sail the one who asks don't repel them so have kindness even with that person don't humiliate those people so anybody who you see who is in need don't humiliate them and if they're seeking need to seeking help still be kind to them even if you need to turn them away there's a kind way to turn them away if you don't have money you don't have something to give you don't have whatever it is there's still kindness that you can give to that person this surah is a beautiful reminder and a comforting reminder of us that maybe you are sad you're in a struggle something is going on remember that allah loves you and remember the favors that allah has given you and remember that what is coming is better than what is current and also remember that the same way that you need allah and are seeking love and mercy and generosity from Allah if you want that love and mercy and generosity from Allah do the same for others so be kind be generous to others be loving to others so you want Allah's pleasure don't turn people away harshly or humiliate them or oppress them and then lastly but as for the favor of your Lord report it speak about it the prophet ﷺ, what favor was he given he was given the prophethood the message 
the knowledge, Quran. And so this covers that, the favors of your Lord, whatever it is, the favors of your Lord that he has given you, speak of it. So the Prophet ﷺ is being told to speak of it. The blessings that and the favors that your Lord has given you, speak of it. But also it is a reminder to us that the blessings that we do have come from Allah. So connect them to Allah. So when you, when you have something and you have favors and you have blessings, report it connected to Allah it's not from our own efforts and it's not about boasting and saying look what I did or look what I achieved or look what I have it's about connecting it to Allah that these blessings alhamdulillah look how kind Allah has been look how generous Allah has been look at Allah's favors so it's from that point of view the things that we have it's a reminder to us that the favors that we have today they are from Allah so talk about the blessings of your Lord and that brings us to the end of the surah it was just a quick overview into the surah a beautiful surah that opens up with imagery of light and darkness reminding us that there is light after darkness reminding us who the source of light is Allah and reminding us to recognize the favors that Allah has given us and to take that as a reminder that Allah's promise is true. When he says what is coming is better than what is current, it is true. What is with him is better and what he wants to give us are things that will satisfy us. When he gives, he gives to the point that we are satisfied. So that's what we should strive for. That's what we should seek. We should keep striving for the pleasure of Allah because what is with him will completely satisfy us. So to remind us to put our focus in Allah and not get distracted by worldly desires and worldly things, but to remember the ultimate destination with Allah. Ya Rabb, make us from the people who get to that ultimate destination and witness the blessings and the favors of Allah on us and Ya Rabb give us all a good ending Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah for all of Allah's blessings around us He tells us that if we tried to count them we wouldn't be able to but we should still try to recognize and speak of the ones that we do recognize and take time to reflect on all of Allah's favors on us because they are endless favors on us. I hope that you found comfort in this surah and I hope inshallah it was beneficial and assalamu alaikum.